वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर पी पी अजय कुमार प्रोफेसर ऑफ इंग्लिश स्कूल ऑफ डिस्टेंस एजुकेशन यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ केरला टुडे वी विल डिस्कस द नॉवल ए पैसेज टू इंडिया बाय ई एम फोस्टर व्हिच इज इंक्लूडेड इन द ट्वेंटी सेंचुरी इंग्लिश लिटरेचर द नॉवल ए पैसेज टू इंडिया बाय ई एम फोस्टर इज वेल नोन एस इट brings about a kind of uh, interaction between india and england dealing with the experience of colonialism in india and the various aspects of it the novel looks at the whole experience of colonialism from the point of view of the colonizer the present module will familiarize the students with the novel as such and will place the novel in the larger context of 20th century modernist writing em foster is a writer who has wide experience of travel all over the world and these travels give him experiences which were transformed into novels a passage to india is one of the most famous novel written by em foster mainly because it originated from his real experiences in india as a as a traveler and as a person who has come here to stay here and to work here so his first hand experience in india contributed much in presenting a kind of authentic experience of the interaction between the westerners and the natives a passage to india the title itself is indicative of the relationship between england and india or in general europe and india and the relationship is not just that of a colonizer and the colonized because moreover in general terms it also speaks about the interrelationship between two cultures the western culture on one side and the eastern culture on the other em foster attempted to study the relationship between these two cultures and analyzed the kind of interaction between them he looks at indian culture as uh, dominantly spiritual in nature whereas the western culture is materialistic in nature and he wanted a kind of combination of the two so his travels to india helped him to come across the wide variety of people and cultures that are part of the india and uh, we find that a passage to india also discusses certain aspects of this variety because it presents the religious groups in india like muslims hindus as well as christians and attempts uh, a kind of comparative analysis of the three the basic Uh, understanding that foster has about these cultures is that there is a kind of gap that remains between these different cultures the hindus are not able to understand the muslims properly and the muslims are not able to understand the hindus and the wide gap between these two religious groups is mainly because of this lack of understanding so in that sense the novel also looks at the uh, cultural uh, specificities that are part of the nation that is india and tries to uh, find out the kind of gulf that remains within the nation as a whole now let us look at the important works of em foster in 1905 he published were angels fear to tread 
in 1907 the longest journey in 1908 a room with a view and in 1910 howard's end and passage to india was published in 1924 even though he started writing it before the ending of the first world war but for a very long period <clears throat> before his death he did not write any novels he concentrated on criticism as well as other kinds of writing he died at the age of 91 a passage to india is considered to be an expression of em foster's secular approach towards religions as well as cultures he was a humanist by nature and tried to look at different cultures from a kind of secular point of view at this particular novel uh, was selected as uh, one of the 100 great works of 20th century english literature and it deals with the political occupation of india by the british now let us look at the title of the novel a passage to india the title is taken from the famous uh, poem leaves of grass the famous collection of poems leaves of grass by walt whitman actually the title gives us the impression that it is a novel about a journey a journey to india from the west at the same time it is not just a physical journey but a journey to understand the culture of india or it is a journey uh, from the western culture to the indian culture a journey to understand to explore the uh, nuances the various nuances of eastern culture and being a british uh, subject em foster had his own prejudices about india that india is the land of people who are not educated not civilized etc but his impressions about india changes after he comes to india and we find that the novel tries to present a picture of india from his own point of view and analyzes the kind of religious confrontations as well as the kind of people who are uh, good at heart even though they are divided by religions and tries to present the interactions between the western culture and the indian culture in this novel and a passage to india in that sense becomes a kind of uh, expression of the cultural mosaic that is india the novel actually is uh, set in chandrapur which is an imaginary place chandrapur can be any place but it is believed that it is modeled after bangipur a city near patna it has all the characteristics of an indian village it is near a river ganges and uh, uh, it has uh, different types of people living so chandrapur can be any village or any place in india at the same time the novelist tries to uh, present the typical indian people and the typical indian culture through the uh, presentation of the village chandrapur so now let us look at the narration narrative technique used in this novel the narrator is a third person narrator but at the same time what we find is that the narrator is able to see everything that is inside the mind of the characters as well as outside the mind and uh, uh, we find that the this kind of a narrative technique enables him to present what happens within as well as without 
so now let us look at the major characters in this novel dr asis is one of the important characters in this novel and dr asis is an indian muslim and he is a widower and he has three children the whole novel uh, centers around this character and he has all the uh, weaknesses or all the kind of uh, characteristics of a an ordinary indian muslim who develops uh, certain prejudices against other religious groups but at the same time we find that experience teaches him many things and going through several experiences we find the kind of human being within him succeeds and the kind of uh, transformation that happens to aziz is through his interaction with people belonging to other religious groups in india as well as with the british nationals uh, mrs moore is another important character she is an elderly woman with three children and she comes to india with adela costage and uh, it, she comes with a special purpose to see india as well as her son roni hislo who is working in india though an english woman mrs moore is very sympathetic towards indians she is uh, very decent and kind and uh, totally different from uh, other british characters like roni hislo she to a certain extent is a representative of the ordinary british citizens who are very sympathetic and loving towards indians they don't want indians to be subjugated by the british they don't support the imperialist attack on india or the kind of colonial overrule of india so mrs moore can be seen as a representative of the ordinary british subjects who do not suppose the cruelties imposed on indians by the colonial power adela is another important character adela costage is again another liberal woman that we find in this novel adela uh, actually is betrothed to roni and uh, she comes to india uh, to see him but we find that roni is a very different character uh, and he is very cruel and he is very strict and he has no sympathy for indians whereas adela shows a very liberal approach she is young and intelligent and she is strong enough finally to decide not to marry roni roni is roni hislop is another important character he is the son of mrs moore from her first husband so roni represents the cruel uh, strict colonial officer in india and his approach is totally different from that of mrs moore and adela he is a bureaucrat and uh, he is not only cruel towards indians he also behaves in the same callous manner towards his mother a few important characters are also there cyril fielding is a schoolmaster and a very liberal minded person mohammad ali a friend of asis he is a lawyer amrit rao is a hindu attorney who acts as a defense lawyer of asis and professor narayan god godbole is a dakoni brahmin professor who represents the hindu philosophies so after looking at the novel in general and the characters uh, and the important concerns of the novel now we will look at the novel in detail
the it is divided into three parts titled mosque caves and temple and these three parts to a certain extent represents the three different sections in the indian society the muslims the english and the hindus the characters most of them rep also represent uh, these three groups and we find that it is the whole novel is modeled on a kind of cultural interaction uh, between these three groups so the dr assis is the central figure in this novel and uh, assis certainly represents the the muslim religion at the same time he is friendly with people who are belonging to other religious groups his british friend is mr cyril fielding and mrs moore and miss adela and uh, he has good relationship with all kinds of people belonging to christianity as well as hinduism and your and one incident that is very crucial in this novel is the trip to the marabar caves and we find that it is in during this trip that adela accuses assis of assault a kind of moral assault on her that is she accuses that assis attempted a kind of rape and uh, we find that this brings assis to all sorts of problems and uh, uh, we find that the central conflict within the novel is based on this accusation even though in the end it was proved that it was a false accusation this particular incident led to racial tensions prejudices and all kinds of religious confrontations within the society so this particular incident in the novel is intended towards presenting the kind of religiosity that is present within our society all problems within the society are looked at from religious angles or the kind of central conflict within our society is very much connected with religion and that is proved by this particular incident in the novel the novel also discusses the relationship between the west and india as we all know the colonial experience was something that controlled and to a certain extent defined the fate of india the whole nation fought against the british and succeeded in gaining independence but the novel was written before independence and it tries to present the kind of cultural and political interaction that happened between the west as well as the east the prejudices that the westerners had about india is presented in the novel in clear lights and we find that they look at india and indians as primitive uncivilized etc at the same time the novelist tries to reveal the good aspects of indian culture its spirituality and the kind of atrocities that the british colonial power has done in indian india and at this and we find that the novelist attempts to bring about this kind of interaction between the west and the east which has become a, a crucial in the 
making of the nation that is India. The difference in language, the difference in culture, the racial difference and the regional differences that are part of the Indian nation is to a certain extent revealed through the novel. So a passage to India uh, is in one sense a novel that attempts to reveal Indian culture in its entirety. The novel A Passage to India also presents certain solutions to these issues. It is true that India is divided on many ways, but E.M. Foster being a humanist attempts to look for certain solutions to this problem. One solution that he suggests is friendship. The novel presents friendships beyond the cultural boundaries. Friendship between Aziz and Fielding, Aziz and Mrs. Moore and uh, uh, similar friendships point towards the fact that the cultural divide in India or the religious divide in India can be solved to a certain extent through real friendships between people belonging to different religious and cultural groups. We find in the novel that on certain occasions, that is on several crucial occasions, Aziz is supported by his Hindu friends as well as his Christian friends and we find that the victory of Aziz after the trial is celebrated by all kinds of people. So it is a kind of understanding and a kind of friendship that can be developed between various religious and racial groups that can solve some of the issues that is prevalent in our society. Another important solution uh, is a, a kind of um, understanding between the religious groups. It is true that it is the misunderstanding that creates most of the problems between different religious groups and racial groups in India. So a proper understanding of the life and culture of the different religious groups can certainly or to a certain extent solve the issue. The novel in other ways presents a critique of the imperialism as well. While looking at India and its diversity, it also tries to pose questions about the empire. The empire is presented as a racist institution which controls the innocent Indians and exploits the riches of India. And we find that it is the British Empire which is responsible for creating disharmony among Indians. So the novel opens a kind of criticism against the empire and its uh, atrocities against the Indian society. One of the important incidents in this novel is connected with the Marabar Caves. We find that Aziz, uh, Mrs. Moore and Miss Adela, Fielding and Godball, they plan to visit the caves together. But Aziz has to travel alone with Mrs. Moore and Adela because Fielding and Godball arrived very late. And in the cave, the weather was very hot. And the three go in and out of the caves and uh, they could not find the way. There was uh, a haunting sound of an echo inside the cave. So the cave itself is uh, highly symbolic in this novel because 
it represents the indian culture indian society the kind of uh, un understandable nature of the indian culture as far as, as far as the westerner is concerned so we find that inside the cave mrs moore is very much haunted by the sound of echo and she feels that something touches her and adela and asis continue to explore the other caves adela and asis get separated eventually and asis cannot find adela asis believes that miss derek adela's friend picked up adela but fielding joins asis meanwhile and mrs moore and uh, all of them board the train back to chandrapur asis is arrested for charges that are unknown to him when the train uh, pulls into the station and this is what happened because asis uh, never thought of being accused of any any anything related to these these uh, visitors but at the same time what we find is that uh, asis being an indian is arrested on wrong charges or on suspicion so the kind of discrimination between the indians as well as the british the discrimination that is inflicted on indians is very much clear from this incident and fielding publicly vows to defend asis and uh, we find that asis is charged with assault on adela in the caves fielding believes that uh, it was wrong and he was very much sure that it was wrong adela might have been hallucinating but even then nobody believed it and asis has to face trial the trial becomes another very important aspect of the novel because the trial unearths the racial tensions that is resident in the indian society the racial and political undercurrents are very much clear in the trial scene we find that there are two kinds of laws for indians as well as for the british and uh, uh, while indians will be persecuted for suspicions or very silly crimes the british are never allowed to uh, brought to the court that means they don't have to face any kind of uh, trial for even very huge crimes uh, em foster had a direct experience of this discrimination in india because the jallian wala bag massacre uh, was a kind of shocking experience for him and he found that there was uh, a kind of double standard played by the british and uh, this trial to a certain extent also is commemorative of this experience because it reveals the double standard of the british and uh, in the court room what we find is that uh, there are people who support adela and people who support asis and uh, mr das an indian magistrate presided over the trial and uh, what happens is that during the trial the uh, arguments finally become irrelevant when the the accuser explains that she has no interest in proceeding with the case and the judge 
drops the charges. So at that time we find that the acquisition was a false acquisition or based on some kind of suspicion or prejudice. So the trial brings to light the kind of justice that is prevalent in India under the colonial rule. And uh, we find that a ceaseless victory was celebrated by all Indians belonging to all religious groups. So what happens is that a kind of transformation happens to Aziz. We find that he became a nationalist or even more nationalistic than before. And he started writing poetry. And his love for the motherland and the nation becomes stronger after this incident. And uh, we find that Fielding and Adela return to England and Aziz decides to move out of the British colonial India and he decides to become part of a free India. The three sections in the novel, mosque, cave and temples, actually refer to three different aspects of our culture. And in India, we find that uh, the mosque, which is the first part of the novel, is presented in a very cool weather. In India, uh, we find that the weather conditions uh, are related to the emotional and uh, men psychological aspects of the individuals. So the rainy season is often connected with some kind of sad experience, whereas the cool weather uh, is connected with uh, experiences that are uh, very uh, happy and normal. And uh, the novel attempts to present some of these weather conditions that, exp that is experienced in India in relation to the uh, incidents in the novel. So the first part of the novel is very cool. And uh, the events that happen in the first part of the novel certainly is somewhat sober. So it is titled as Mosque and the weather condition that is presented is the cool weather. Whereas the cave is a hot weather because the problem within the novel originates in the, within the cave and the hot weather uh, is indicative of that problem. And uh, uh, the last part is titled as temple and the weather that is suggested um, in that part is rainy season. So we find that in the last part, the characters pass through several troubles and finally uh, end up in a very happy mood. So the novelist consciously attempted to connect the story or the experiences in the novel with the different weather conditions in India. That is the cool weather, the hot weather and the rainy season. So the symbolism in the novel are centered on these three aspects connected with the novel. So we have already looked at the writer E.M. Foster and the novel A Passage to India and the various topics that are relevant in the discussion of the novel A Passage to India. You can have more details from the material that is uploaded and try to read the texts that are put in the further reading section. Hope you will go through the novel and the various interpretations of the novel and 
uh, will develop a better understanding of the novel. Thank you.